Deus, qui inter apostolicus sacerdotes famalentum Robertum, sacer natali fecisti, dignate vigere, presta quesumus, une orum quoque perpetua aggregator, con consortium, per dominum nostrum Jesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate spiritus sancti Deus, Per omnia secula Quis vam nom haven, sien in crerimus por Iesu, modus est ad resurrexi, ita Deus eus qui domiarum per Iesu, ad vucet cum eo, hoc enum vobis dicimus in verbo domini, quiam nos qui vidimus qui resiruis sumus in adventum domini, Non preveniamus eos qui domiarum, quonium ipse dominus in Iesu, et in voce arcangeli et in tuba dei descendant de cielo, et mortui qui in Christo sum resurrent primi, 
Tende nos qui vivimus, qui relinquimus, simorapiem morcum ilis in dubitus, aviam Christo in aeras, et sic semper cum domino erimus, itaque consolamine in vicem in bevis isti.
Dominus Vobiscum.
Parate fratres. Eronia secula seculorum. Nominus corobiscum.
Los Ope Territorios.
Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tolga peccata mundi. Domine non sum dignus, ut inter sustecta meum, set tantum de verbo, et sanabitur anima meum. Domine non sum dignus, ut inter sustecta meum, set tantum de verbo, et sanabitur anima meum. Domine non sum dignus, ut inter sustecta meum, set tantum de verbo, et sanabitur anima meum.
Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Custodia Animam Tuum Vidum Eternam Amen. Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Custodia Animam Tuum Vidum Eternam Amen. Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Custodia Animam Tuum Vidum Eternam Amen. Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Custodia Animam Tuum Vidum Eternam Amen. Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Custodia Animam Tuum Vidum Eternam Amen. Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Custodia et Animam Tuum et Vitam Eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Custodia et Animam Tuum et Vitam Eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Custodia et Animam Tuum et Vitam Eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Custodia et Animam Tuum et Vitam Eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostra Jesu Christi Custodia et Animam Tuum et Vitam Eternam. Amen.
Dominus Fabiscum. Oremum. Crucit Quesimus Domine, anime family tui Roberti, sacerdotis misericordiae tui implorata clementia, ut eos in quo speravit et credidi eternum capia, te miserante consortium. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui te convivit et reina in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per amia secula seculorum. Dominus Fobiscum. I'm so grateful to be here for this wonderful occasion. I know certainly Bob is so pleased today, not for his own sake, but that God can be praised in such a way as we've done today. And so certainly to the sisters, to Brother Priest here, and to Bob's family, I want to offer my sincere condolences. I was obviously shocked when I received the call uh, from Frank. 
And yet, I can't imagine losing a brother or, or such a great friend. And we know that he gives us such hope in seeing the witness of his priesthood. I remember he, he called me a little over a year ago, and he said to me, and I'm going to try to channel him a little bit here, Hey, Mike, I want you to preach my funeral. And I responded, and I thought, well, Bob, did you already schedule it? <laughs> I mean, it would have been much easier if he had written a homily and just let me kind of say what he wrote. And he laughed, you know, he did that, ah, no, you know. But he said, I want you to do that for me. And I was so grateful. Um, I remember when I was first ordained, he called me and said, what do you want for your ordination? I don't want to give you a Bible. I don't want to give you a rosary. I, everyone's going to be giving you those things. I, I want something that you're really going to use. And I said, well, I could use the Summa, which are the, the teachings of Thomas. And he said, do you want them in Latin or English? <laughs> and I thought, well, it's hard enough to understand in English. I can't imagine you know, reading Aquinas in Latin. Uh, my 10th anniversary as a priest, he got me combat boots to match my cassock in black. I'm wearing them today, actually. And so our relationship through the years I guess we were both kind of rednecks, and that connected us in many ways. Um, our conversations were not necessarily deep and theological, but they were about, you know, the world and things happening in the world. And I could honestly say I have a shelf or two in my library of books that he sent me. In fact, his latest publication is right here, you know, and I read through it. And, you know, some might talk about conspiracy theorists and everything else. I wouldn't even say he was a prophet. In many ways, things that he said did come to pass. But he was a historian. And one of the graces of being around so long is that you can see the cycles in history. I recall one time we were talking about the 60s, and I said, I'm glad I never had to live through the 60s. And he said, we're living through it. You know, again, it's just they're organized a lot better and we have the web. I mean, it's very practical that way. Uh, I was in Lebanon, I was pastor there, and many times we get together on the back porch, or he'd come over and visit, but in his later years, it was a little bit more difficult, medically and physically, and I would not be surprised on a Thursday or a Friday, and he'd call and he'd say, hey Mike, I'm at the Good Sam, the Good Samaritan Hospital, and he said, I need you to come over, hear my confession, give me communion, anoint me, and then I'll tell you what you're doing at the parish this week. I was never in the military, but a lot of times I felt like a, a private first class, you know. <laughs> but he was always so gracious, and I've stolen so many of his stories that he told. Because in Mesh and everything he did, whether it was the military or the parish or anything else, was his priesthood. It was infused in everything he did. There's a, a Latin adage Nemo dat quod non habet. You cannot give what you do not have. And because he was, it was so easy to give. Because this is who he was, he really didn't have to say too much. You could just see how he lived his life and the way he spoke to people. I remember him one time saying, every person is in search of God. They just don't call it that or they don't know what it is yet. But it's our nature, we come from God, and within our nature is this longing, this desire to be with God, and then we have many names for it, but we cannot act against our human nature, despite what the world might say today. We cannot, we're created in His image and His likeness. And so we spend this journey going toward Him. He once told a story, he said, you know, there were people from the old world coming over as immigrants, and they were fleeing, you know, communist situations or, or what have you, and they got on this boat, and most people gave away everything they had so they could afford a ticket on this boat. And so they're in the bowels of the ship, and they're heading to the new world, and many of them, you know, were very poor. And a father is with his family, and they had their last little chunk of cheese, and they were sharing that as their last meal. The father said, I have, you know, a penny here. Go over the whole ship and try to, to buy some food for us. 
And so the son was gone for some time, and the father was getting a little worried. Well, he's gone for a few hours, and the father was really concerned. So he scoured the ship looking for his son. And as he's passing by this room, there's a room with tables filled with all kinds of food. And there is his son, gorging himself on this food. And the father was outraged. He said, how, how can you do this to us? We're going to be in servitude to these people for years. And the boy responded to the father. And he couldn't understand this at first because the boy's mouth was filled with food. But when he finally, you know, swallowed the food and he spoke clearly, he said to the dad, the food is included with the price of the voyage. Here were these people in the bowels of the ship starving to death. When the food was there, it was free. And he said, there are so many people who aren't on the boat. Why wouldn't they want to be on the boat? And there are so many people on the boat that aren't taking advantage of the free food. In other words, this is our ship and this is our journey. And there's so much that the church offers. And he wanted every person to know that, whether they wanted to know it or not. He wanted every person to know that. And any opportunity he, he had, he wanted to share that. And so he would be probably a little embarrassed or mortified if he went all over his awards and everything that he did through his life. But the thing that he would be proudest of is that he tried to get as many people into heaven as possible. He tried to get as many people on the boat as he could, and he tried to inform the people on the boat as many as he could that the meal was included. I can't imagine a better way to spend your life than revealing to people in subtle and, and much larger ways, in revealing to people what it is that they've been longing for all along. We ask for his prayers today, and we pray for him. We offer thanks to him for his ministry, and we offer thanks to Almighty God for allowing us to share in that journey with him. Before we pray the final prayers of the church for the absolution of Father Berger's body. I just want to speak in my own words to you, Frank and Kathleen, and to all his nieces and nephews and those who are here because Father ministered to you as another Christ through his priesthood, uh, that you have not just our presence with you this morning, but especially speaking for our, my brother priests and in my own name, you have the promise of our continued prayers certainly prayers that God will be merciful in judging our brother Bob and receiving him into the glory of eternal life, but also our prayers for you, because your lives are changed. When we lose a loved one, uh, we, we go on trying to get back to our normal routines, but in his absence. And so I, I'll continue to pray, and I know that your faith uh, will be the strength and the hope that we all need when we face the mystery of death, our own or our loved ones. I'm glad to see that so many things that were so important in Father Berger's life uh, are represented here this morning. That his, um, uh, the, we have two retired army chaplains here, uh, and that's wonderful. Um, uh, and uh, thank you both for, for, for being here this morning to honor uh, Father Berger. We have the Knights of Columbus Represented, and we have the the Order of the Holy Sepulchre represented here. Um, uh, the funeral takes place here because of his deep love for our dear Carmelite nuns. And even though he realized there'd be restrictions, not necessarily the general thing going on in the world that makes this restricted, but but even chose to be here in this small chapel for his final uh, the funeral mass because of his affection for our cloistered Carmelite nuns. What a, what a beautiful testimony. Um, and uh, I, I uh, wanted to mention that uh, last, no, last Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving of 2019, 
I, I visited Cardinal O'Brien, who personally came to our diocese to induct Bob into the Knights of the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, I had just gotten both knees replaced, so I was unable to even cross over to go. It was done in the chapel at the diocese, um, and, uh, but Cardinal O'Brien was in the country, and he, he um, did the actual induction ceremony personally for uh, Father Berger. Um, when I visited Rome last November of, of 2019 for our ad limina visit, I, I wanted to go to see uh, Cardinal O'Brien because one of our priests, Father Bateman, another um, uh, Air Force chaplain, um, uh, it was his secretary. And uh, I sat down in his sitting room and we were chatting. And I, he, had, he had a bookcase, naturally, and book, but there was a picture on there. And I said, nah, I, I, that's you, isn't it? Younger you. And he had it. I said, that couldn't be our Father Berger from... And it was. it was. It was Bob Berger's picture with Cardinal O'Brien. And apparently, and I, I think I have this correct, that, that Father Berger came to take Father O'Brien's place in Vietnam. He was the post chaplain or the chaplain there, and, and Father Berger came to take O'Brien's place. And so they had a picture taken as they changed the guard, as it were, the changed chaplains. So, so Cardinal O'Brien, I know, would, would want me to say a word of uh, his condolences as well uh, to, to all of you. Um, beautiful job, Father Rotan. Thank you for the, the, the reflections on, on this life so well lived uh, in service to our country, first in the National Guard and then 25 years uh, in, in the Army as chaplain. And then as a very devout and dedicated priest, I, I always appreciated his clear, his limpid analysis of what was going on in the church, what's going on in society and in the world. Uh, he understood, he wasn't afraid to articulate uh, his, the, the way he saw things and what he saw is what is happening all around us. And he showed us the way as well. The way is faithfulness to Christ, faithfulness to our church. And so uh, when we talk about feeding the poor as a work of mercy, we generally think of soup kitchens and getting physical nourishment, and that's so, so important. But here's one also who understood that feeding the poverty of, 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 of spiritual life uh, uh, is someone who gave, gave all of us rich food, great nourishment through his preaching the truth, his love for Christ, and his love for the church. Let us continue to pray for him, and let us honor him by imitating some of those great virtues which he illustrated so beautifully during his life. Oremos. Non entres in judicium cum servo tuo domine, quia nullus apud te justificabitur, justificabitur, uh, homo nisi per te omnium peccatorum ei tribuatur remissium. Non ergo eum quesumus tua judiciale sententia prema, quem tibi vera supplicatio fidei Christiane commenda sed gratia tua ili superente mereatur evadere judicium utionis, qui dum viveret in sinicus est signaculo sancte trinitas, qui vivis et reinas in secula seculorum. Amen.
Et ne nas in ducas tentationem. A porta inferi. Requies cad in pace. Domine exaudi orationem meam. Dominus Fabiscum, Oremus, Deus qui proprium et miserere semper et parcere, te supplices exoramus pro anima famili tui, Roberti, sacerdotis, quam hodie de hac sac seculo migrarius isti, ut nantradas eam in manus inimici, Neque oblivistaris in finem, sed iubeas eam a Sanctis Angelis suscipi, et ad patriam paradisi perduci, ut quia in te speravi et credidi, non penis inferni sustinea, sed gaudia eterna prosideat, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. 